This video is powered by private internet access. With apps for Windows, Mac, Linux, and even Google Chrome, they've got your VPN needs covered. Check it out at the link below. What's up guys, CP Modder here, back with another video, and I actually get asked almost every single day, in fact, almost every hour at this point, what do I think of this build for this particular task? And they insert either a PC part picker link, or some sort of little list below that comment to sort of see what I think of a build for a certain task, or what they should upgrade, or something along those lines. So I thought, why not grab a couple of those comments and actually sort of answer them in a video, and give you guys some of the thought processes that I go through when thinking about upgrading a system. Now, specifically today, we're looking into the upgrade side rather than what I just think of a build in general, and we'll be taking a bit of a look at what you might want to upgrade or what it might just not need an upgrade or something along those lines. And I did grab them from the comment section, and speaking of that comment section, if you want me to have a look at your build, whether you're looking at an upgrade or you're just looking at a new build, or even heck, if you just want to show me your PC part picker link, let me know down in that comment section. So I'll do my best to get to everyone, but uh, depending on how full that comment section is, maybe I won't get to everyone, but I will definitely do my best. So, let's go ahead and jump into our comments that we do have right here, and the first one being a gaming system with the Core i3, 6100, 8 gigs of RAM, and a GT 1030 with a 500 watt Seasonic power supply. And the question in this case is what should be upgraded for better FPS? So when it comes to actually upgrading a system, the first thing I always do is now just fire up Task Manager, because the fact Task Manager has CPU monitoring, GPU monitoring, drive monitoring and RAM monitoring, it's basically a one-stop shop for a quick snapshot into your system. So with this particular system, I would fire up whatever game that you want to be running at better FPS, and then just open up Task Manager as well, start playing that game, quickly Alt-Tab to see what's maxing out, and upgrade that specific part. But without actually doing that, because I don't have these parts on hand, um, I would definitely be looking at that GPU. The GTX, or rather the <laughs> Intel Core i3-6100 is only a dual core, but does have hyper-threading, so it shouldn't be too bad there. The 8 gigs of RAM, whilst is lower for a lot of modern games out there, is still definitely playable as we found out in that video right there, whereas the GPU is definitely going to be the sore point of this build. Don't get me wrong, the 1030 still can definitely play some games at decently low settings, but definitely okay settings compared to where we were a few years ago with low-end graphics, uh, but all in all, I would be looking at a GPU upgrade. Now, as for what kind of upgrades, I'll be looking at something like a 1050 Ti or even an RX 580 uh, would be a great bang for the buck type of card. Both of them around that three three fifty dollars uh, dollar range here in Australia, so definitely not spending hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars, although 350 is still pretty expensive, but you're not spending that top tier kind of money like the thousand dollar GTX 10, or rather 2080 Ti, or even still the thousand plus dollar 1080. So uh, it is still pretty expensive on the high end side, but. 350 is a good place to start. Now also too, it depends on what you're playing, because that GPU may be maxing out, but that CPU might also too be maxing out. So if your game takes advantage of more CPU cores, you may want to consider a CPU upgrade. However, if you just want one upgrade for around that $350 price tag, uh, I would definitely put that straight into a better GPU. Again, depends on what you're playing, but generally speaking, I would be looking at a GPU upgrade just about any day. The next build, whilst is relatively similar to our first build, is for a different task, so we do have an i3-8100, a GTX 1050 Ti, a Seasonic 500 watt power supply, surprisingly enough the same type of one, and 4 gigabytes of RAM. Now this user says they use it for office tasks, which is pretty much a pretty decently well specced out system here for office tasks and web application, but they want to run more things on their system. Now, they didn't say what the things were, however the first thing that really stands out to me is that 1050 Ti, because they said it was more of a web browsing and sort of office type application job, I'm not exactly sure why there's a 1050 Ti in the system. Don't get me wrong, maybe you do play some games here and there, and that's why you've thrown in a video card, but honestly, if this system's only for browsing the web, watching some YouTube videos, and uh, also to replying to emails, typing up Word documents, there's really not that much point for a video card. In recent years, onboard video has gotten really, really good, and to the fact that I haven't actually put in a, de a dedicated video card in an office system for like 
six years maybe at this point. It's been a very, very long time since I've actually recommended a dedicated GPU in an office system. Even graphics from quite a few years ago has still come a long way. Don't get me wrong, you always get better FPS and better graphics with a dedicated video card and I'm not saying to chuck out that 1050 Ti, not at all, but um, if you're not really using it for gaming, I would have rather spend that same money on that 1050 Ti on something like 8 or even 16 gigs of RAM or even just an SSD because you didn't mention that there was no SSD in there. Something like a 120 gig drive are super cheap now. I think you can pick them up for like $15 and they're big bargain bins of uh, SSDs. So uh, definitely I'd be looking into that front. But for this type of an upgrade, I'd be looking at getting 16 gigs of RAM into that system as fast as possible, as 4 gigs is rather limiting, especially if you're trying to run multiple Chrome tabs and multiple uh, web processing applications. And I'd also do look at an SSD. Again, SSDs are really cheap. Grab yourself a 120 gig drive for a boot and keep that existing drive you've already got if you don't have an SSD, or even just get a bigger SSD. I mean, 500 gig drives aren't exactly that expensive here in 2019, so I would definitely be looking at RAM, followed closely by a new drive. Now the next one is not exactly a uh, desktop system and is a little bit different to the questions that I usually get, but it's still one that comes up all the time, and that is, I have an ASUS VivoBook uh, S15, the specifically the N58ODV, or rather VD, can't even say my numbers and letters right, uh, and this user wants to upgrade their i7 to an 8th generation part. Now, I decided again to include this system because I get this question quite a lot and does definitely come up a lot when it comes to upgrading your systems in these types of way. And, um, Rather than just sort of laughing at them or giving them a stupid let me google that answer for you, um, the legitimate answer to this kind of a question is, unfortunately you can't actually upgrade laptops in the same way you can with desktops. Now, a lot of us in the PC space already know this, but there's definitely a lot of people who are still on the entry level side that this is a valid question for them. So, to answer it simply, unfortunately no, a lot of manufacturers, just about any manufacturer are at all in recent years, have all soldered CPUs, all soldered GPUs if they have one, most of the time soldered RAM and all also to, in the case of Apple, soldered SSD. So unfortunately on the laptop side there's a lot less you can upgrade when compared to something like a desktop PC. Now uh, in terms of your question, no unfortunately there's no way to upgrade your system because most likely uh, it's all going to be soldered in there and even if it wasn't soldered, I'm very very sure that ASUS wouldn't support this kind of stuff in the software side. So especially in the laptop side, desktops are not so much of the problem right here, is let's say hypothetically you were able to upgrade the CPU in the system. Somehow you manage to unsolder the CPU and get one managed uh, to put in all that kind of stuff. Hypothetically, you've just upgraded your CPU. If you were to go ahead and boot that system, there's a high chance it just wouldn't boot at all. Not because of an electrical or physical side, we've just said hypothetically it would work, but more so on the software side. Because laptop manufacturers know that this particular model is only going to have this CPU or only going to have this GPU or only going to have this RAM configuration, a lot of the time they'll only validate the BIOS or the firmware or whatever's running the system with that particular set of hardware, which makes total sense. Why would you validate your laptop with other parts that are never gonna be in that laptop? So, both from a software and hardware standpoint, there's not really that much you can do for upgrading things again, like CPUs and GPUs on a laptop. Now, that being said, there are other laptops out there like the recently released Alienware laptops that do have replaceable graphics and do have upgradable CPUs. However, they're only on the super high end. And let's face it, if you bought one of them, you're probably not thinking of an upgrade anytime soon. But uh, just to keep this sort of question in mind, no, unfortunately, you cannot do an upgrade like this at all. Another build that actually reminds me of my old PC that I used to have is a 5820K i7 with a GTX 780 Ti, two SSDs in RAID 0 and a Corsair RM1000 watt power supply and some mechanical drives, it would be nice to know what kind of mechanical drives, but either way, the question right here is this is the system and I'm looking for better FPS in 4K and high refresh games. Now I'm not sure whether we're looking at 4K high refresh rate or 4K or high refresh rate because I'm, I'm not really clear there, but either way, uh, you'll need a video card upgrade. Just plain and simple as that, GTX 1080 Ti will get you by or some like a 2080 Ti will also to get you by. Both of them are extremely expensive though the 10 series are coming down in price point right here. Uh, but if you're looking at uh, 4K gaming, you're definitely going to have to spend some serious cash to get those frame rates. And 
That being said, it's still a lot better FPS than 1440 or even 1080p. Now that 5820K is still getting a little bit older and both AMD and Intel both have consumer grade uh, CPUs with six cores and 12 threads. So a lot of people might be assuming, well, why not upgrade the CPU? Well, answer is pretty simple. That 5820K is still a powerhouse of a CPU. If you got a good one, it's also too gonna be pretty decent at the overclocking side. So honestly, I don't really see that much of an advantage, especially on the gaming side to upgrading that CPU. Sure, you may be seeing better IPC in games, better single core performance in some situations, but honestly, it's pretty much gonna be fine by today's standard. I mean, I was running my 5820K just the other day, in fact, on a, um, well, I pointed over there, but it's actually over there, uh, on a little test bench, just doing some simple games, doing some tests here and there. And honestly, I had no problems there. So um, I would keep that 5820 I'll keep whatever RAM you've got in that system. I would pretty much just focus my entire budget on upgrading that video card. Whether you sell out the old 780 Ti and grab yourself a 2080 Ti or something along those lines, uh, video card upgrade with something I would definitely be looking at right here. And rounding out our builds, we have here today quite an old system, but nevertheless, we're an 8350 from AMD with a 7770 GPU, also two from AMD, and eight gigs of DDR3 RAM and a one terabyte SSD. Like, wait, hang on. I really hope they mean SSD because as a storage kind of person, I do love that kind of stuff. So that's uh, a little bit of out of place. Maybe they meant hard disk drive, but either way. Um, and they're going ahead and looking at upgrading to an FX9590, which is not a bad chip. And honestly, um, I would say yes, go ahead with this upgrade if you can get it done on a budget. Um, for this kind of a system, it is definitely getting older and a little bit sort of uh, outdated. Though that being said, the 8350 is still plenty enough for 1080p gaming in most situations, in most games. Um, though that being said, keep in mind, spending a bit of money on a mid-range kind of system is going to net you better performance than that 8350 being upgraded to the 9590. Sure, that being said, you'll need to buy a new video card, you'll need to buy a new RAM, a new motherboard, and there's a whole lot of things you'll need to buy new, but you will see better performance. However, specifically looking at this question right here, going to the 9590, sure, I mean, if you can get it on a budget, again, definitely would, would, would go ahead and do it. Uh, personally, I might be going ahead and looking at a video card upgrade rather than a CPU upgrade. Um, but just depends on what you are actually doing. Now the actual comment says right here that they're doing some retro kind of gaming, though that being said, kind of depending on who you ask will depend on what the definition of retro type of gaming actually is, because that 7770 might be perfectly fine for some older games that weren't just around way before that 7770, and you'd be getting perfect performance right here. But my question would be then, why do you need that 9590 if you're playing a retro game? So I'm not exactly sure the uh, mentality behind this upgrade. If you can get it done for around $100, I'd say absolutely do it. I mean, $100 for an upgrade system like that, perfectly fine. You may need a new cooling system, but either way. Um, but if you're gonna be spending more than $200, I personally would be then just saving that money and looking into a completely new system. Again, sure, you can't recycle the parts as you could if you were just upgrading to a 9590, but at the same time, you know, spending five, 600, maybe maybe even $700 today could very well see you getting much better performance than that 8350 system is currently getting. But again, comes down to what you're doing. And that's sort of the conclusion of this video. Sure, there are definitely some really great upgrades for a lot of people out there, but comes down to what you are after in a system upgrade, or even if you need a system upgrade at all. Um, sure, a lot of these systems that we did have a look at here today definitely could take advantage of some system upgrades, as I kind of picked the ones that definitely could easily see some decent FPS increases or just productivity increases, but I've seen a lot of people out there who build themselves a brand new system, and literally as soon as they turn it on, they're thinking about what is the next thing they're going to upgrade. A lot of people build systems and then just go, now I need to upgrade all these parts inside of it, rather than just taking a few weeks, months, or even years to just enjoy the new system that they built, because something newer and better is already out. Now, yes, don't get me wrong, we're PC enthusiasts. I do this myself. I absolutely love to follow the latest tech, and as soon as I build something and something else newer comes out, I go, damn, I, I should have bought that myself. But um, it definitely comes down to what you will expect out of your system. As I did mention earlier in uh, the actual video, when it comes to looking at upgrades, simply just open up whatever you want to do, open up Task Manager and just see what is maxing out. If the CPU is maxing out, maybe it's time for a new CPU. If the GPU is maxing out, hey, maybe it's time for a new GPU. Or if the RAM is running out, maybe it is time for some extra RAM. It really comes down to what you need rather than what the internet does say. For instance, I was on a forum the other week and I was looking through some new PC building sections and I found someone who was on the forum just getting into PC gaming and looking at building their own system and sort of seeing what people thought they should go ahead and build and 
The most sort of uh, recommended system was a 1080 Ti and 7700K base system. Like, not really something I would personally recommend for someone who's first getting into PC gaming. And honestly, if they don't really get hooked on gaming, they've just bought themselves a 1080 Ti 7700K system, wasted a bunch of money on something they now don't like. So honestly, when it comes to upgrading your system, take everything with a grain of salt and see what you want to do rather than what the internet wants. Don't get me wrong, there's a lot of people out there like me who love to give out advice and help you along the way with building and picking parts. But at the end of the day, it is your money. And I don't exactly know where I was going with that uh, little story. But either way, um, go ahead and uh, do something. I, I don't really know what I, where I was going with that. Either way though, the parts that we talked about will be linked down in that description box. If you want some advice or my two cents on whatever may be going on, let me know down in that comment section. I'd love to have a chat with you guys. And uh, if you want to see more of this series, do let me know. But thanks guys for watching. I'll catch you all in the next one. Wow.